Hello, we are the SpaceX fans and welcome to the SpaceX show, the place where you can stay up to date with everything SpaceX. On Monday, SpaceX successfully launched their eighth mission of the year with the launch of Starlink 638. Power and liftoff. Go Falcon and go Starlink. The boost which launched this mission, B-1062, then landed successfully for the 18th time on the drone ship a shortfall of gravitas. Stage 1 landing confirmed. Also on Monday, SpaceX successfully launched their ninth mission of the year with the launch of Starlink 712. 1. Ignition. And liftoff of Falcon 9. Go Starlink. Go SpaceX. The booster which launched this mission, B-1075, then landed successfully for the ninth time on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You. Stage 1 landing confirmed. Then on Tuesday, SpaceX successfully launched their 10th mission of the year with the launch of NG-20. 1. Ignition. Invisible power. And lift off. Go SpaceX. Go Falcon. The booster which launched this mission, B-1077, then landed successfully for the 10th time on the landing pad at Landing Zone 1. It's back down on land. Stage 2 FDS has saved. Stage 1 landing leg deploy. SpaceX posted some information about the fairing halves used for this Cygnus spacecraft mission. It says the NG-20 fairing has a custom design built in 5 foot by 4 foot door to support late cargo loads onto Cygnus by a mobile clean room. We could expect to see another Starlink mission launch later in the week. The Starlink 713 mission is currently scheduled for Saturday 3rd at 3.04am UTC or Friday 2nd at 10.04pm EST. There was an article about the amount of data being transmitted through the Starlink lasers. It says SpaceX's laser system for Starlink is delivering over 42 petabytes of data for customers per day an engineer revealed today. That translates into 42 million gigabytes. There was an interesting post I wanted to share about a SpaceX job listing. It says, looks like SpaceX is beefing out its private astronaut sales team with the company hiring two human spaceflight sales managers, one responsible for finding and recruiting high net worth individuals who are interested and can afford to train as a private astronaut. Heading to Boca Chica, work continues on the new launch site wall. SpaceX's crane at the launch site is now being reassembled. A tank was seen leaving the suborbital site. A replacement tank was seen being installed in its place. The newly installed mega bay door was seen being lowered. Here's a look at the work continuing on the expansion of Star Factory. There was some cool information posted related to a payload that will fly on a starship. It says, today is a momentous occasion for Voyager Space and Airbus Space as we announced that Starlab Space has selected SpaceX's Starship to launch Starlab into orbit. SpaceX quoted this and said, Starship will fundamentally change how we access space with entire space stations like Starlab launched on a single mission. There was an article posted with some information related to Starship. It says the Pentagon has approached SpaceX about potentially taking over Starship for sensitive and potentially dangerous missions as a government-owned, government-operated asset instead of contracting the company to launch payloads. Ship 26, after a bunch of work recently, was lifted off of the work stand. Starship 28 was recently seen moved to the work stand for final checkouts as it awaits being transported back to the launch site. As always, I have to say thanks to Mary, otherwise known as Boca Chica Gal, for being out there filming the Starbase content. Also, thanks to the NASA Spaceflight team working behind the scenes on their videos, live streams, and other space content. That's it for this episode of the SpaceX Show. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button and leave a comment down below. If you want to stay updated with SpaceX info, make sure to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified when I upload. Thanks for watching and have a great day.